And welcome back here. Let's uh, continue on. I think we have some things in our bag right away that we want to look at. Um, by the way, we're, we're working our way up to another level right away. Let's see. What were they saying we had here? Oh, new items. Yeah, so a photo of a happy couple. Um, postcards. We found stuff in the trash there. Let's go. Interacts. Yeah, there we go. So we interacted with this book once. Now let's interact with a damaged ledger. This is a ledger you found in the trash. It's full of notes written in a man's dense cursive. Have a close look. Maybe it can be salvaged to start keeping notes on the case, really? Or is there something we can read in it? It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Urinal. Urinal. And this is, uh, is this our old ledger? Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper. Or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper. Uh. Desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. Mmm, yum. It's a metaphor for you. Below the pathetics? Terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Okay, I inspect the toilet paper, inspect the clip, browse the white papers, browse the yellow, look at the clipboard, smell the ledger. Um, right away, I want to smell it first. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Mmm. Well, let's inspect that toilet paper, then. It's just toilet paper. Stick into the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Maybe it's kitchen tissue. They look exactly the same. I don't know. Um, we're gonna leave it there. It's oh, If we take it off, is it hiding something? Leave it there. It's cool. Way cool. <laughs> it says, everyone look at me and my toilet paper covered cop ledger. I don't care. My ledger is droopy, and it smells like a urinal. Urinal. Okay. Uh, the clip. Let's inspect it. An aluminium block runs the width aluminium. of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your fingers across the aluminium. Uh, enough of the clip. Now we're going to run our, our fingers... The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Hey, Lieutenant, what is this? What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. Okay. It takes a moment for him to see it. Interesting. What kind of information? How can I read it? Interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp. Mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. Okay, perfect. Um, How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like All our sample vehicles have had lights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Okay, interesting. Uh, so we okay. need to... Okay, <laughs> he returns to his neatly kept note. We go to the car. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Well, let's, uh, let's browse all these. The white papers? They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51 this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, 
due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases undertaken, not completed, mind you. Undertaken, not completed, and the naming convention I'm interested in, what we're using. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? Uh, there was mention of a naming convention. I'm interested in that first. Uh, count the pages. I have to open an official case. Is there room? I'm done inspecting. I want to know about the naming convention first. Yes. It appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. For example, give me a few. Oh my, they've, uh, they're have they written in capital letters too? I don't want to. No, I want to know. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural. Another... The square bullet hole murders. Another yet, the unsolvable case. More? Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location, and the murder at the Ukar parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close, Okay, um, is this another one of our time things? We'll see. Uh, it is two cases a week. Okay, Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. Let's continue with our thread. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? Uh, that's the one. No, I mean non-numeric with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Uh, why is that? Because it's fun? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have named a case of the square bullet hole murders. Makes me actually think about um, old nails. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. Yeah, well, also you need to separate yourself sometimes if, no, you have to like really know all this is real. It's like psychologically remove yourself from the reality of it. I pray happened. his loved ones never find out. Right, what happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. Right, and that's what I was thinking with the, the nail, but a rail spike, I guess. Uh, is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Not in return to the case notes. I'm going to say not in return. Arson. Petty theft. Spousal abuse. Handwritten logs on dozens of investigations date back to January 51. Stamped case files. Commit to paper. These are your last couple of months in Revachon. Precinct 41. Jamrock Quarter. Let's now move on to counting the pages. I have, I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Should we commit to paper? This Is this our final case? Sadly, the ledger only comes with an old, worn-down lead pencil. It's unfitting of this monumental event. Uh, I'll ask for a pen. Kim, do you have a pen? The lieutenant looks at his blue notebook. Two fat, shiny pens hang from the binder, like large-caliber bullets on an ammo belt. Is he going to say, no, I, I can't can't do it? He is not really saying anything. Just standing there, looking at them. <laughs> Can I have one? Know that I give this to you with resentment. Okay. He pulls one from the loop. 
uh, with this beauty commit to paper. The task you've completed flow out of the blue oblong pen in a brash freehand uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. Uh, across the ones that you finished, which we've interviewed the manager, but not the body. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. Indeed. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Hmm. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? The hanged man, uh, the furies are at home in the mirror. The setting sun, shit on a stick. Actually, I don't have one. I'm gonna say, uh, shit on a stick. Ah, yes. I have to tell you, officer, I don't appreciate ironic titles. Other officers will have to use this as reference. If it's idiot or cockfinger, <laughs> they're not going to get it. They're going to think an idiot and a cockfinger were on this case. So, do you have something less funny? Um, the hanged man is what actually sounds the right one, but I'm going to say I don't have another name. Oh, well, then maybe I can suggest one. Uh, let me guess, the hanged man? No. I'm going to say go ahead. The hanged man. He really likes that name. Okay, that's idiotic, mockingly. The hanged man, way too simple. I'm not feeling it. Um, I'm gonna say I'm not feeling it. Are you sure? I think it's pretty serviceable. Yeah, not feeling okay, it. Okay, then. The case doesn't need to have a name. It actually does. You've offended him. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, let's name this case again, okay? Fine. For inter-district cooperation. Let's try one more time. We'll what go with the hanged man. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. Make him happy. The hanged man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it the hanged man. It's good to be sorted, is out. Oh, we're close to a level here soon here. Okay, well, I'm done inspecting uh, these that close the case files. Well, well, the case files, yeah, but... You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Okay, well, we we want to browse them again, maybe. Uh, logic. Kim explain the system. First, I want to browse the yellow papers. Let's try that. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow. Some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms waiting to be filled out. I just keep watching this kid, too, in between. Throw these rocks just at the body. How many can he do? Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. What types of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. That field autopsy form. Should we be using that soon? You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. Ooh, to say the least, huh? Um, well, let's go through them. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. I wonder if we could threaten people with misconduct fines to be able to get information from them. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. And lastly, that was the station call. Let's go to field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in age sex condition of internal organs um beat up by stones and rocks yes yes all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people fines for wrongdoers interview requests for bad guys and field autopsies to dead guys 
The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. All right, well, uh, let's bra look at the kip clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Oh no, what did you say the color was again? Blue, right? Blue. Right. The blue heart. Don't look into it. Ooh. Uh, okay, well, let's let's look into it now. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. Um, how would I open it? With your hands, you four-sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. Okay, well, can we... Uh, minus one for lonesome long way home because we've already done that. Ooh. Well, let's try even um, open the hidden compartment. Is not what you end up doing. You squeeze the plastic to slide it open, but nothing happens. Then you bend it some, then crack it. The goddamn thing is stuck. The ledger quivers in your hand. As it shakes, the pages rustle. This pathetic mess suddenly afraid of you for some reason. Well, we'll be able to try again right after we go up another level. Let's um, let's try the, can I read the case files now? Yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41, then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. For example, HDB41120117. Zero, zero. The next world mural. Right. Um, precinct 41. Wait, HDB 41. Weren't those officer precinct? Why, yes. Your precinct number is 41. And HDB? Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. And these are your case files. Dubois. It's safe Wait. to say HDB are your initials. Okay, so we are Dubois. Harry Dubois. HDB. Still feels like there's something missing from that. I think what you meant to say was RAC, Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. No, fine, I give up on Raphael. Fine, then, I give up on Raphael. That's comforting to hear. Now, detective, it takes half an hour to piece one of these together, if you still want to. Here are your options. Ooh. Um... We could go in order, but how about the couch in an unexpected location? I want the square bullet hole murders. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks, on her rocking chair, with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. But? That's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you know is the entry wound was square-shaped. You never found the bullet. And then another body showed up, also with a square hole in his forehead. Could it also be um a high heel? Who knows? Those pages are missing. What next? A sequence killer or serial killer? Is that what we were thinking? Don't worry. One day. One day you may still catch the man with the square gun. Let's go. Uh, let's go out of order here. Let's. Well, let's go. The couch in an unexpected location. Some assholes brought their couch outside and hung out on it, in the middle of the street, on the roof, on the hillside by the motorway. You know, at an unexpected location. They were young, and they thought they looked cool on it. Uh, they actually looked like assholes. They they looked really cool, like models. They looked really cool, like a rock band. I'm going to say like a rock band. Yes, as you've said here, insufferable rock and roll assholes. Young people are the worst. So anyway, you got a complaint about the damn sofa, or couch, or whatever it was. Love seat. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations. They took it to 
where they also took photos of themselves on it and smoked cigarettes and drank coffee because they felt it's intellectual. Cigarette butts, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up, and you did. So congratulations to you. Case solved. Did I ever catch those guys? No, you didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real goddamn job. You don't have time to be chasing down the couch assholes. You have a real job to do. What next? Uh, unsolvable case. Well, it's unsolvable. The next world mural. Let's uh, look into our actual murder at the hookah parlor. Murder. Tum, tum, tum. At the hookah parlor was a case originally assigned to an officer called Joseph Mills, who is now dead. Of circumstances completely unconnected to murder at the hookah parlor. Uh, yeah, let's... How? How? Wait. Beaten to death by a throng of Villa Lobos gang members when him and his partner, J.M., only initials mentioned, answered a call one night. It's a sad story, and it isn't really represented in your case files. Stop stalling and get to the murder at the hookah parlor. Right on. On with the murder. Joseph Mills was on this case that he just couldn't solve. Was doing it solo. Said it was a real nutcracker. A real brain twister. Was on it for, like, a month. The captain got impatient. Shit or get off the pot, Mills. Mills didn't get off the pot. Not yet. He kept at it for a couple of weeks more. Racking his brains. Running with every theory as outlandish as they seemed. Still couldn't solve the murder at the Uka parlor. Uka. Tough case, he said. Toughest he's ever had. Uh, wait, was Joseph Mills a good cop? No. He was awful. <laughs> awful sense of humor, too. The worst jokes you've ever heard. Really rapey. Still, fun. he'd been on it for months now. Said it was the final case. Said it was uncrackable. That murderer vanished into thin air. That goddamn hookah parlor was all he talked about. Go on. Okay. So the case is handed to you because Mills isn't getting anywhere. And you look into it. Here's the setup. A young man is found dead in a hookah parlor. You know, those places where you go and smoke bubblegum flavored vapor all day. Yeah, uh, can you get high off it? No, it's it's tobacco, it should be. Uh, really cool, really stupid. I'm going to say really cool. Yeah, really lame. So anyway, <laughs> young man in his 20s found with his skull busted open right on the floor of the hookah parlor in the middle of the day. No one else is in there. Only client that day. In perfect health, too. Some kind of movie producer. No one enters. No one exits. He's just sucking on his watermelon hookah all morning. All noon. Like he usually does. He's a regular. No calls. Nothing. Just sucking on the hookah until 1545. Then bam. He's dead. On the floor with his skull busted open. Blood everywhere. What happened? How can it be? Mills has no idea. Invisible assassin. Movie deal gone sour. Girl at the counter did it. Nothing fits. Eerie. Man just dropped dead. So you go to the parlor. You see cushions around the table. Tables low, heavy, really sharp edge. Right. He sucked hookah, stood up, passed out, hit his head on the table and died. See? You can't even read the thing without solving it. Yeah, it was that. Turns out hookah does do something. It turns off your brain's oxygen supply, and you don't notice it until you get up to go to the bathroom. Right, because he just he wasn't getting any oxygen. He kept just sucking on the on the pipe. Uh, he must have sucked a lot of it. And what was he doing there for six hours? Smoking hookah. Didn't you hear? I don't know. Trying to come up with a movie script, maybe. Anyway, that was Murder at the Hookah Parlor. Joseph Mills wasn't a good detective, and about 30 minutes has passed piecing it together. Next. Yeah, we're watching. There's time here. Are we just like... Yeah, let's go to the next world mirror. This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower 
part of a failed real estate development called Grand Coudon. There's so much by this. This game is just a, a reading game in time. We're just going to stand here this whole episode just hanging out with this body. Maybe not the whole episode. The mural <laughs> is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads. For, form reads? True form love reads. is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. Lots of, I love the anti-capitalism and the communism and all the weird, like just the social arguments in this the game. The Graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the Bell Letchers have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the Graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They Ooh. take responsibility for the execution but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. Wait, do I ever find out who came up with it? The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41 which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options. One is remove the mural, it is wrong, or B, keep the mural, it is right. Is this me selecting? I'm going to go with keep the mural, it is right. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority. And that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. And it is too late for us. All that remains is to wreak havoc on the middle class. The middle class are not to be blamed, it's human nature. I like it, but can't we wreak havoc on other nations instead? I must have voted, and possibly even lobbied, to remove the thing because I don't believe in that rubbish one bit. I'm going to say, um, the middle class are not to blame, it's human nature. Let's go Did with that. Did anyone ask you what you believe in, man with the smelly toilet ledger? What do you want to tackle <laughs> next? Or are we done? I think, uh... Well, actually, can we... We can play around with this. We can go up our level right away. Let's do it. We also have read the watermarks, uh, who put clothes in the trash. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, I don't think we have anything. Nothing to learn here yet. But we can go up our level. Now, once again here, um, there are a lot of things that we can kind of play with. But... I'm gonna go with uh I'm just I'm just putting money just points into empathy just to get the bonuses. I don't know why. You know what I mean? I I don't know. It's a psych, we went with it. What's it say? Empathy breaks into the souls of others and forces you to feel what's inside. It enables you to notice social cues others may miss. Perhaps a hidden sadness you could coax out a little more. A strange joy from someone who should be bereaved, or a hidden resentment that could be could return to harm you later. At high levels, empathy really puts you in other people's shoes. You'll cry for their sorrows, punch walls to relieve their angers, and be an even more unstable cop. <laughs> nice. Perfect. With low empathy, however, you will be ungainly beast, unable to talk to anyone without upsetting them. Cool. Let's move on to the uh, unsolvable case. A.K.A. Leslie and Burke. A.K.A. The public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk is a cursed case. It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in general, know it's unsolvable. You were so drunk, you didn't remember what it was when you signed on. That, or you were high. So we didn't do it out of uh, a good goodwill. Leslie will always take his pants off when he's drunk. 
Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man. And you can't lock them away because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. Although I don't know anything about this game, I do think that um, because we're playing the, the final uh, version, uh, the final cut, a lot of this might not have been voiced. Like there, there might have been a lot more reading involved. So this is kind of fun that we get to sit back and just listen to this voice. The only way for Leslie to stop displaying his genitals and for Burke to stop attacking things would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which in their 40s or 50s, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability. Uh, couldn't we just keep them off the streets? Let's proceed. Threatening fines, dragging them to the station. Locking them up in the hell holes they live in. Locking them up in the station. Hypnotherapy. Even trying to get the local gang of Zemiaki to take them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol, so Bert Ooh. and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all. And still the complaints wouldn't stop. As they hadn't stopped for ten years. It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV, and Special Consultant T.H. had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of Perdition. And what is Leslie doing? Property damage, or I'm going to say public indecency. Good. You're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things, and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. Uh, the case becomes considerably less comic one day, when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. You're drunk out of your mind on potent Pilsner. You slam the hardened plastic board in his face. Then you proceed to beat him unconscious with it. And we just heard about this uh, ledger being able to be used as a cudgel. In the process, the ledger sustains damage. The compartment within, reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. The officer began to cry, reports Leslie, who at this point is tending to Burke. Speaking of which, we can try to open that. I he came again. at us and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. You've smashed it open on poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk anymore. Can't get out of his apartment, an invalid. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows, but both drunks are off the street. The complaint stop. The unsolvable case is solved. Oh, hoorah. Which is also why the officer responsible narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. The end. Do you want to read another one? Uh, I can revisit this, put the case files away. We are, we are through. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. Okay, well, at this point, though, let's try the interfacing one more time here. Oh, plus two, it, it crack on the knee like Burke. Just relax. The two sides of the board are slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off the slides. All you need to do is bend the plastic on your knee, slowly. The slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know. Slide the drawer open. Wait, somehow I don't want to. Uh, wait, somehow I don't want to. Let's slide it open. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. And what's inside? Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Oh, well, well first ticket stubs. Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revershaw oh. East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there, too. Okay. Um, what? Okay, well, let's pick up the card. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. 
Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. Glue, let's sniff that glue. It smells of chewing gum. Apricot flavored. A touch of cinnamon, the end of summer. You think the label says tutti frutti. Ah, let's open it. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card. Looped, round letters in a woman's hand. A young woman in her twenties. There is care, effort, and a smile, you think. Although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting. Harry, it begins. You're already reading. I wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up. Maybe it will make you happy. Throw it away, please. No, no, but it will make me happy. Keep reading. Your hand shakes, holding the card. Every morning when I step out and you're asleep behind me, it says, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest, down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step onto the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. I know it will be like this until late afternoon, when I get off the 42 and walk back to you. Keep reading. You. You. Every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. Kisses, kisses, kisses. You feel the air sucked out of your lungs and the Ooh. blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. Small white dots appear. You feel the ledger slip from your hand. Uh, item lost. Damaged ledger. No. No. Hold on. Hold on. Let's hold on. To what? There's nothing. Detective, is everything all right? I guess we have to fall sideways. If we had endurance, we wouldn't. I don't understand. Do we lose the game? No. What? Begin. There is nothing. Oh. Are, are, we, are we beginning? Again. Uh, nothing? Again. Just lie there past out. Well, almost nothing. There is the ground below you. That's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering somewhere in the basal ganglia. Who's that? That's me. Blue eyes. That's me. And who was that? I'm going to say nice and quiet. Is it? The world is gone. You are no longer reacting to outward stimuli, yet still. A bitter caustic sense of loss remains. Even in the darkness, great sorrows slip in the water. Slimy. No, I was cool. I'm cool. Uh, no, that's the stuff. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. Oh, little young. Some shadow. Mm. Because it's always there. Uh, was the X something? Where is Voyager Road? So my name appears to be Harry. Enough. Just lie there motionless. I'm going to say enough. You think they would let you? Until you disintegrate into biomolecules. No. Someone is breathing on your face now, inspecting your pupils, stupid idiot. Uh, the lieutenant. What is that? It's cold. Um, I'm gonna say, what is that? It's cold. Yes. They're pouring something on you. It's in you. And it's... It's delicious. Booze? Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge out of nothingness. Where am I? The upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. Drink. Water. Uh, 
The lieutenant is extending a small canister to your mouth. No, I don't want it. No, we'll drink some water. The water is cold, silvery, the stuff of life itself as it pours down your parched throat. The pounding in your head recedes. The darkness parts. Drink. You haven't drunk water in two days. Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? You <laughs> need a secondary form of hydration. Indeed. With greedy gulps, you down half a liter of cold water. Some of it spills on the driver's seat. The lieutenant pays no heed to it. By the way, what time can we go to sleep? 21? Another hour? What happened? I should ask you the same. I came in contact with the burnt-out ruins of the past, Lieutenant. Conclude. I was dehydrated. It won't happen again. I fuck it. Start climbing out of the motor car. I'm gonna say I was dehydrated. I was gonna say I came in contact with the burnt-out ruins of the past. That does sometimes happen. Uh, item gain: ledger of failure and hatred. You dropped these. Are you okay to proceed? Uh, just nod. Yeah, let's go. Good. All right. Uh, continue. The Ledger of Failure and Hatred is a special item that can be used both as an interactable and a tool equipped in your held slot for skill bonuses. Find it under the Tools tab in your inventory. Beautiful. Okay, well, let's, let's look at a couple things. First of all, let's go, we have... Oh, we still have a mug to look at, by the way. We're going to that. Um, oh, but we have tools. Now this ledger, okay. Uh, this is the same ledger you found in the trash, only worse somehow. It makes you think about the letter, about the woman's handwriting, about not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. It's the letter Let's look you at found it. in the trash. A cabbage Again. of papers hanging from the board with the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Urinal. Oh, and the cool piece of toilet paper is stuck to the back. I slide the hidden drawer open. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. Inside, you see two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. You know what? Um, I'm going to close it's it. It's slightly... Ever so slightly. Difficult to breathe once you've done so. The drawer is locked. Blue ink drips from the white pages in your hand. We're going to put it away for now. What does it do here, though? Um, where to put it in our hand? Let's... I don't know. What's that do? It's hard to see. Um, equip, close. I don't know. We're going to keep it in our hand. Why not? Let's come back over. Now we have to read the watermarks. Get in front of, uh, Kanemia. Yeah, the headlights to read the halogen watermarks in your ledger. This may yield some information about who you are. Who you are. First go to the Kanema and turn on your lights. We will. And who put the clothes in the trash? That's one we're working on. Ask Kuno if he knows anything about the clothes. Ask Gart, the manager. So we'll go to Kuno. But, um... We have this here now. White Morning. Temporary research bonus. Minus one authority. Little guy gets further and further away. Research time, five hours. You see yourself from above. You're passed out on the blue tiles of the hostel room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyelids flutter. At the mention of what? A great white object letting out its sweet smell like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten its name, but he still remembers the feeling. And look, he moves. The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for the feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. Solution. Oh. Okay. Um, you know what? I We lose authority, but I'm gonna... I don't see why we don't want to... Do we... Can we only internalize so many things? A temporary research bonus. I don't know. Let's Let's go with it. White morning. I don't know. We just we just have fun, right? We're just having fun. It's fun. Okay. Uh, let's for a moment here. Let's walk in front of these headlights. Can we look at the ledger now? All 
Are we in front of the headlights? Enough. Let's interact. That's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers. Oh, and the cool piece of toilet paper is stuck to the um, back. Look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. Yeah. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Something rattles inside. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not okay. see-through. Um, With just your hands, conclude it. Hold on. You four-sized pages hang from Inspect the, the clip. Wasn't that it? Block runs the width. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. Point to the what? sticker. That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. We got that. How can Any I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Okay. Okay. While a bunch so we of have sodden to, papers sag let's go away. We have to we don't have the lights turned on, is that the issue? There we go. So let's interact with the car. Inside, we also have that cup, you see of a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Kim, how do I turn on the headlights? All right. Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. He's downplaying his excitement. The lieutenant is more than happy to show off his precious carriage. Well, engine start. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The rounds per minute gauge jumps, and the engine of the Caprice Canema comes to life with a whiny growl. Press the button labeled headlights. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need okay. to stand in front of the machine now. Okay, we're closing the door. Oh, what was um was our our head telling us? Come on. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Looking up at the sky. Cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Grey sky like great battleships. Clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. How does it feel? Humid. Your coat shields you from the rain while the city shivers around you. Well, let's go through it. What's in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez, with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you, ghosts? What is down the shore? Run your fingers through your dampened hair. Your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance. This is weird. The shivers. Okay, what's in the east? The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Shake your shoulders again. You shudder, looking down at your feet. Dirty rainwater runs veins into the plaza snow. Two green snakeskin shoes stand at attention on the mosaic paving of the plaza. Uh, what's in the north? Capeside apartments. Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clothes lines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. Disco. A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath a dead man's feet. He swings from a tree, bloated. Droplets of rain slip from his cold cheeks. Yeah, we need to get that body down. <laughs> What's in the south? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. 
The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. Which we saw so south of us, right? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Why am I not there? I'm going to say shudder. I look further. In the rain-swept distance above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. A look up at what's above. Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. Rotors? Or below something? Or, I don't know, little steampunk action? They've kind of, I don't know. Uh, what's below? Collapsed storm drains. Old sewage systems flooded with rainwater. Hidden weapon caches from the revolution. Doors leading down to Le Royale. The catacombs to which, for three centuries, they delivered the blue-blooded dead. Well, will we be going into catacombs at some point? Well, let's finish our thought, motherfucker. This rain will not let up anytime soon. At least we are dressed for it. Let's keep moving. End. Okay, um... We haven't gone through all... Read the watermarks, yeah. Now go stand in front of the lights. Got it. Um, let's see... As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Revachol West. There's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Can we ever make it to West? Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. Uh, look at the perforations. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. The first row has 18 dots. Not bad. Uh, what about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. Count them individually. There are so many, it's hard to count. More than 150, at least. Maybe even 200. Uh, what about the last row? The last row has three perforations. Is that solved cases? I don't know. That's it. Uh, look at the street grid. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Wait, uh, look around you. You catch a faint glimmer from a broken beer bottle in the distance. Sounds. Two men engaged in a drunken argument, followed by the closing of some distant window. In the middle of a broken plaza, Illuminated in a cone of light, two men, one slim, the other sturdy. They are on the city stage, but only one of them knows his lines. We don't know our lines, is that us? Ah, Martinez at night. He smells the air and says, Oh, where are we on this point of the halogen map? Let me see. He takes the ledger for a moment and inspects it. Right here. He says, his finger near the top of the map on a segment of coast jutting out into the great ocean seems nice seems like a shithole i'm sure i've seen worse oh yes coal city le royaume the burnt out quarter all of them worse than here okay well then we feel we feel good about it hey kim uh what do all these holes mean point to the dots on the watermark those are perforations they represent your record as an officer of the rcm they are your statistics as it were I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Wait, 18 years I've done this? Uh, got drunk like a megastar? I walked the land telling horrors and liars of the end to come. 
There are 9,855 days remaining. Probably some boring office job. I feel like I just went around apologizing all the time. Uh, do you really think I have any idea? That's a fair point. Let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see. Wow, we've closed a lot. Wow, more than 200. Is that a lot? I would have thought there'd be more. I'm going to say, is that a lot? It's quite a lot. Even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. So you're saying I used to be a super cop. I used to be good. That's some solace, I guess. What's the last number? Uh, I don't think I can ever re-become this person. What's the last number? Hmm. I, did we used to be good? I don't know. I'm just going to say I, I don't think I can ever re-become this person. What's the last number? Right. Those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations there. Confirmed kills. That sounds pretty evil. A drink would soften that feeling. Yeah, we should go. We could go to the store and try to find a drink. Um, I was expecting a higher number, honestly. That's not too many. Is now a good time to pour out one for the fallen? I'm going to say that. Definitely not. All right. Um, I was expecting a higher number, honestly. I'm going to say so I'm a killer. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamra quarter, it's rather um, tame. I mean that in a good way. All oh, the cops are killing everyone. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. It's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. Well, we don't kill and we've solved lots of cases. And we're just like horrified by everything we've seen and we're drunk and broken from the world. But it seems as though Maybe. you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Uh, have you ever killed anyone, Kim? I think that's a little personal. I'm going to say, how do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. He gives you a meaningful look. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like tip-top racing? <laughs> Maybe I should find a hobby. Maybe I should find a hobby. Why not gardening? You've already got the yellow gloves. Ooh. It's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. All right. Well, have you ever killed anyone? I don't think I want to ask him that. I'm going to say thank you. Thanks for this and conclude. The lieutenant nods. Okay, let's go. Right. I'll go turn off the lights. Task updated. So we've gotten that. Um. You can now see your statistics on your journal page to the right of the task description. Well, uh, let's do that. Uh, to the right of the task. Oh, case is solved. Two sixteen. Superstar cop. Apocalypse cop. Sorry cop. Name unknown. Rank unknown. Communist two. Fascist one. Ultra liberal two. Moralist. What? Years in service. Like are some of these, like how we, are resolving, like in game stats. Interesting. I don't know. Like tasks. Maybe. Um. Before we move any further, I don't want to forget this. Let's go back to... Oh, we've got a few things. Well, items. Let's uh, look at the pen. A blue pen like a large caliber bullet that shoots out ink once belonging to Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Comes with a side order of resentment, indeed. Let's see how far this takes us down the rabbit hole, but um, maybe not. This broken-eared mug somehow made its way into the Whirling Rags dumpster. It depicts a person of Samaran descent frolicking in a field of saffron flowers, buck-toothed and grinning feeble-mindedly. It seems to be a cheap knockoff of some colonial-era antique. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not There's quite much. a lot to read in. <laughs> There's quite a lot to read into here, actually. Look at all that content. Oh boy, here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed-away mug that you dug out of the garbage? Um, this mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. I'm go Or two, I'm going to push this into the face of every merchant I find and tell them this is your inane ideology. 
The mug will be useful. By denouncing it, I can earn political capital to mask my badass hustling, i.e. fraud and embezzlement. Or four, the mug didn't belong in the trash. It was just a funny mug. Can't anyone laugh anymore? Ooh, all these are a little weird. I'm going to say, um... I'm going to say this mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it to, as an example of what not to do. But it was in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it? Or do some volunteering work. Just finish your case, detective. I think you may be right. Okay. So. Our next steps then. Um, oh, let's. Well, let's read. See what we're What's thinking. What's this? We're getting reports of normal. Reasonable, temperate, <laughs> political. Oh opinion, no, us. Some oh, our empathy, huh? You must be mistaken. I'm a real radical. Uh, that's me, Mr. Reasonable. Someone, someone's got to keep it sane around here. This is because I keep saying none of the above to political stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna. This is because I keep saying none of the above to political stuff, isn't it? It's also about that, but it's also more. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin, but something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the Kingdom of Conscience. Ooh, first, where is the Kingdom of Conscious Conscience? Uh, no more talk. Sign me up for a passport. Opt in. Ooh, uh, no, I'm too fiery for this watercolor ideology. I'm trying to develop more extreme and interesting opinions. I don't know. We're playing this how we play us. I'm going to say first, where is this Kingdom of Conscience? It is not a place. It is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. Uh, that's an honorable goal. Nod your head approvingly. That's a stupid goal. Shake your head dismissively. How do you bring about those circumstances? Incrementally. Oh. Yawn. You'd get there faster with a little speed. <laughs> ah, good devil on one shoulder, angel on another. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. Ooh, maybe truth there. That's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually, increment by increment. Okay, but what about all the things that are wrong now? I'm going to say, okay, what's the kingdom of conscious actually like? The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe. I feel like we're taking a path with my empathy path here. Partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial post-ideological, and even post-sexual. Ooh. Uh, sounds incredible. Alanzi. Uh, let's go there right now. Opt in. Or that seems fine. I still want to live for the present, though. Opt out. Man, that sounds kind of terrible. I don't think I want to be a moralist anymore. I'm going to say, we're on it. We're going to say, sounds incredible. Let's go there right now. Slow down, Mr. Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? Oh, oh, right. Then uh, let's get there eventually. That's right. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Rivershaw. When that real democracy kicks in, a long time from now, we are all going to be so much happier. You know, I feel like, interestingly enough, we had some options here with the white morning. Um, let's stop it. I'm going to stop it. It's 10%. We're going to go to the Kingdom of Conscious. Temporary research bonus. Minus two half-light calm water. An hour and a half, yes. Part ache is powerful, but democracy is subtle. Incrementally, you will begin to notice a change in the weather. When it snows, the flakes are softer when they stick to your worry-worn forehead. When it rains, the rain, rain is warmer. Democracy is coming to the administrative region. The ideals of DeLorean humanism are reinstating themselves. How can they not? These are the ideals of the Coalition and the Moralist International. Those guys are signal blue. And they're not only good, they're also powerful. What will it be like once their nuanced plans have been realized? You know what? We're going to internalize it. Let's go. So, an hour and a half. 
Auto save. Oh, perfect. Exactly. Um, by the way, that symbol in the middle there looked kind of like the white. I think uh, let's go talk to the kid. Let's talk to the, the manager. Let's um, eventually maybe we can go to sleep here in a little bit and let's do it all in the next episode.